one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to start by uh, letting Dr. Morgano talk. Letting you talk. Thank you. You're welcome. It's not often you want me to. I know, I don't really. <laughs> I was playing with the dog today when we were meeting and Carol was... Uh, well, we're first. meeting. He's letting the dog eat pretzels out of his mouth. I'm like, this is like my husband in church playing with the children. Would you stop? I can't concentrate. I lose my train of thought. He likes that one. Yeah. Hey, Amador. <laughs> Welcome. That's okay. He wants to so, go It may be the summer, but we've been busy. And we've been looking at uh, some programmatic opportunities and I'm going to let Scott talk about uh, the program for preschool that we've been uh, discussing. And Scott, you want so, to go over the details? Yeah, um, this past week we had talked about at board meetings about the large kindergarten class and if we got over 30 or that 30 was the magic number that we'd look at uh, breaking the kindergarten apart into two sections. And I think at the last meeting I said then we'd have 15 and 15, we wouldn't have any aids, it would just be the two kindergarten classes. So um, this past weekend, about Thursday afternoon, I get a, I think it was Thursday afternoon, a text from John that said, I've been thinking about something because I sent him an email stating that, that the kindergarten class was getting to that, that magic number. So he said, give me a call. Friday, we were back and forth. I talked to him on Friday. I said, okay, let's just think about some other options that we have. And his suggestion was maybe we can uh, relook at our pre-K program and open up our pre-k program and maybe have a combined pre-k kindergarten program so that the two classes could be two full classes of a reasonable amount of children and thus um, allow um, aids to be put in it and also caleb has been chomping at the bit to look at a way to spend some of our money that we would lose in our pre-k grant which was sixty thousand dollars if we didn't have a pre-k program so we had been back and forth, came up with some pros and cons. We thought about it this weekend. We sat down this afternoon and kind of um, put a game plan together of what that would look like if we wanted to have a pre-kindergarten and a kindergarten um, kind of a combined classroom or a combined set of uh, goals that are um, expended through two classroom settings. So we contacted June. June Lombardi is our kindergarten teacher, and she came in. We kind of mulled over some ideas of what that might look like. Uh, June has been, you know, very receptive to pretty much anything. Uh, when I, when she heard her class was getting larger, I said, "Well, we have an extra room next door." So she already saw a need for the room next door and kind of made it into an activity center. So then we thought about possibly looking at our pre-K numbers that had uh, come in at the end of. Uh, last year so in February or March when we made that decision that we weren't gonna have a pre-k program we already had some families that had, had expressed interest and came up with a number of 13 that was the number that came up why we came up with that number Caleb could probably give you a little better understanding the grant requires 12 or more students in order to get the full amount, the full amount of the sixty thousand dollars so if we look at currently our pre-k numbers exactly as they stand today they're 29 we had another family that suggested that they had a kindergarten student coming in has not yet put in their paperwork that would give us 30 if we did 13 students in a pre-k program then that would bring us to 43 and we could look at best meeting our needs by breaking those two into 22 23 however that configuration is met we would kind of look at what the state requirements were but we could use that sixty thousand dollars to go out and not only assist us in hiring another teacher but also would assist us in hiring three or four um, additional um, aides to help the two classrooms so that's kind of what we were mulling over through the course of uh you know the weekend and, and the class size is limited to once you put one preschooler in it's limited to 20. 20. so there would be 13 preschool students and seven kindergartners in the combined class and if we have a lot more than 13 parents interested we may have to have a lottery if you have the grant you have to have a lottery it can't be first come first sir and any other thoughts scott the limit we hadn't really talked about we two aids in each class yes two aids in the mixed class two aids in the k class and the grant will cover all of that 
will be able to do this program at literally no additional expense to the school district. Because we were going to have to hire another kindergarten teacher anyway. Anyway. The reason this looks effective, looks to us like it can be very effective, is that although there will be 13 and 7, 13 preschoolers and 7 <coughs> uh, kindergartners in the one class and all kindergarten in the other class, the reason it will work is because there will be a lot of sharing, blending of, of work, and with four aides in between the two classes, six adults all together, you can do a terrific amount of small group work with different age groups and with different needs. So you would be, and not at any time saying these seven kindergartners can't do this, this, and this that the other kindergarten is doing. There will be a lot of working together. And June has mixed the third graders with the kindergartners last year. And that blending worked fine. You want to talk uh, about what you're looking at? Well, blending or, or you know, how that would work. Are you talking about combining the classes? And, and as uh, I mentioned in other board meetings previously, our all of the teachers in our building work together. So mm -hmm. sixth grade does an activity with first grade. Fifth grade comes over and does. There's, there's a, a nice flow of interaction and um, like a mentoring. You know, the older kids thrive on taking care of the younger kids. The younger kids love the older kids. Um, so the way I envision this is that we're one big family with six adults. And adults. And adults. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, That's part of the deal. And we we um, differentiate. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, there are things. There are lessons that. Is there a developmental uh, differences among kids at that age anyway? So there's a lot of difference. So and you've handled that in an expert way. And I want to thank you for your optimism about this program. Oh, you're welcome. And for bringing River to my office. Mm -hmm. I, I know that's that. <laughs> that. Um, one of the things that we looked at and that we need the public to know that might be a question is why don't we mix those pre-k kids with all the kindergartners and make smaller than 13 and not have just seven kindergartners that would be for the state's purposes because every time we put a preschool or even one in then we cap it at 20 we already have 30 43 you know we have 43 kids already so we can't cap anything we have to have a kindergarten class that can grow with the incoming kindergartners it should we get more we will have three adults in there, but nevertheless, we have to have a uh, thing that will grow. And so the kindergartners have to be together for the purpose of the state. They will be on one roster with seven to, to keep it at 20. So we get the full grant. We will have 20 and cap it at 20. I believe you can waive we'll or two. We'll get full state aid for the preschool, yeah. full state aid for the kindergarten and the grant. Right. So you can waive up to two preschoolers in there, but that's it. Then we would have to say no to any other kindergartners that came during the school year. It has to be, what I say? You said kindergarten, pre-k. Once you put, a, once pre you put one pre-k student in a class that's limited to 20. So we're not capping During the year, if we wanted to increase the class size, we can increase it by two and get a variance. But that's it. But that would be it. And we shouldn't have the need to do that if we have another section of K. Mm -hmm. But. Do we definitely know that we have these 13 kids signed up still, or did they go to another? That, that I can't, we have not addressed any of these questions with anybody outside of this less. meeting. Right. Right, but on, you know, there's less. But we can't contact them unless we, we know we're going to do this. Yeah. Right. So after tonight's meeting, we'll be contacting. The At least the 13 that had previously engaged in the signing up and registration process saying they had a pre care for this year those that we stopped we're going to have to do a little bit more you know because those 13 may have already found other well, arrangements because we're, 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 we're two weeks away right so that, that, that's just that's my only question yep. and, and my other my other concern was obviously you guys answered it was the age difference i know when you get up into the teens and stuff, eight, two years is, doesn't make a big deal, but when you deal with younger kids from four to six, but obviously you don't feel there's a, there's a concern or issue with that, right? Well. Mix it them. Go ahead, Jim. Let's see how it, um, <laughs> once we know the facts, but I envision that one teacher will be uh, taking the group of pre-K kids, 13 kids with an aide, and 
or two aides actually, two aides. and um, working with them to build the typical uh, entry level skills. And then I, whoever, will be taking the kindergarten kids and doing the kindergarten program. And there are plenty of opportunities to combine for um, fun activities, for enrichment. If there's a pre-K child that's reading already, then I may invite them into kindergarten. If there's a child that's very young and um, having some challenges with penmanship, for example, and they're better suited in a group activity with the pre-K kids, um, it's it's just going, I see it flowing very smoothly. Good. Um, but it will be age appropriate and it will be, um, the needs will be met with all of those adults. I, as a parent, when my children went from the homestead to the Duggan School in White Lake, uh, they had a choice of going into multi-age or straight classroom. And I had reservations. Okay, my child is going into third grade. Is she going to have to spend time teaching the second graders? Because she's the older kid. But that was, it was, it was wonderful to have that experience as a parent and knowing how um, we try to engage our colleagues at different grade levels. I, it's going to be a lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot of work. But I, I think six people is, and I think it's wonderful for the community who felt a loss mm -hmm. not having pre-K to have that opportunity again. Oh, I, I agree with all that. Yeah. If we have more than 13, we'll have a lottery. If we have fewer than 13, we can still do it. We'll lose a little grant money. Per kid. And hopefully throughout the year, if parents want to come in, we can uh, go up to that number. Right. And I included three articles under your um, agendas. Thank you. And one of the articles touches on the transition from uh, preschool into kindergarten and keeping the younger of the kindergarten back in some kind of transitional because the closer they are to the ending number of when you can sign up for school like in December right. um, the harder it is for them to transition into first grade because mm -hmm. they still are young so the articles touch on that it's not and so much the age <laughs> in years and months <clears throat> because and I June can speak to this much better than I. But a typical kindergarten class um, with no preschool, formal preschool ahead of it, you're going to have maturational ages, mm -hmm. even yeah. though they're five, um, of three to eight. And what can happen in this kind of a setting is that those preschool kids who may be on the young end of preschool are going to be exposed both by seeing, which is how lots of young people learn how to do things. You know, your, older, your younger child walks before your older child does because he watches his brother and sister walk and think it's a good idea. And they will see that and they'll try to copy it. Um, and with June's expertise, um, you'll probably see a flow, I think, back and forth. <coughs> because we probably have some incoming kindergartners who have had no preschool experience, mm -hmm. no early learning experiences at all. Who, correct me if I'm wrong, June, but <coughs> I would guess you have some kindergartners who come in, they may not struggle with primary colors, but with shapes and, um, uh, basic um, numbers. Unable to hold a pencil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you've got you've got some kindergartners that are truly going to benefit from what you naturally would do with a preschooler. <coughs> and again, a lot of it is sometimes we're not the best teachers. The other child is the best teacher. Mm -hmm. They tend to have more patience sometimes. Right. Um, multi-age is not a new thing. No, not at all. They, because it's a year. Uh, you have a spread of, of a year in... When my grandson graduated from high school, he was born the last two days of October. 
So he was go he went to school all his life mm -hmm. with kids that were eleven months older than he was. Right. Exactly. And I didn't catch up my sons. until and it's about right. I will. about fourth grade. Right. They I do want up. people to understand though this is not a transitional mm. kindergarten. These are not we're not going to place kindergartners in that class who we think are weaker or developmentally right. lower or anything <clears> like that. It will go by age, the youngest children will be the seven or so that, that are in that oh, pre-K yeah. class. But every single one of those kindergartners will be expected to go to first grade in in June, in yeah, September yeah, of the next year. Absolutely. They're not going to be spend two years in this transitional class, yeah. which is the nature of some pre-KKs. That is the extra, give them the extra year. I gave two out of my three sons an extra year in preschool of my own choosing. Not We didn't have school, oh, school preschool because of one was born in December and the other one was born in October and they were such, they wouldn't hold a pencil, or they only wanted well, to play Well, they're also boys and, and get dirty. Yeah, yeah, so I gave two of them that boys. extra year um, of my own choosing. And so being, but had they been preschoolers with kindergartners, I would not have minded that. That's a, that's a whole different story. So we're trying to think of the questions that the public will ask. Yes. The Jill. other thing is, um, I suppose it could be done in any number of ways, but thinking back in how my children experienced multi-age, they were uh, in a two, three, and then a four, five. And um, so maybe uh, Dave taught social studies and science, and uh, the other teacher taught math and ELA or whatever, and there was a, there was a flow. There was a lot of support, a lot of support personnel that pushed in, and uh, it worked very well because if if uh, Sally, who was in a two or three class as a third grader, um, really excelled in math, they might actually even invite her into the four or five right. multi age right. class so that the needs of the kids. Um, and that can happen and always has at Eldred actually. But, but I, uh, to some degree, that's sending kids up or down, depending on what they need for support. Um, but, but one of the best things we can expect is that it is very hard for most teachers to be alone in their classroom with no one to, to talk with on their, on their break or their planning period to say, you know, I think Johnny is this, that, I think we need to, you know, and get that feedback from another professional so that then you can decide what to do instead of, you know, when they're all alone in the classroom, it's, can be a lonely place That's, and they always don't have time for the planning. They, children also get sick of hearing the same voice all day long. They, they so love to move. It's nice to, to, yeah. to meld and um, hear different perspectives mm -hmm. and you, you know when you have other adults in, in the room you can play off each other with the humor and uh, the kids love that kind of stuff. So based on all this information does the board have any specific questions to be answered at this without preliminary warning. So. I'm just trying to understand the numbers. So well, are we calling this a pre-KK class? Yes. yes. 13 and 7. And it's a blended, what'd you call it? Multi-age. Multi-age class. Multi-age. Not the other word. So once we have one pre-K, we can have, need a minimum of 12 and up to 20. Is that correct? But we won't right. get any more grant money. But we're right. not going to put 20 pre-K in there, we're going to put 13. So that there are seven kindergartners in there. And this covers and our eight otherwise the other section will be too large. Is the seven counted with the pre-K to be the 20? Correct. Or is it only 20 pre-K? Yeah, 20 total. 20, 20 total. class. Total. That's what we tell the state, right? Yep. Okay. And then a, a K class could go up to how many? We would have 20. Theoretically, if we were up to 30, we'd be looking at another split. split. I don't know that that's going to happen. Well, but but in that K class, there's going to be a teacher and two eights in there as well. Right. So the maximum we could have is 30 in one class, all K, and 20. And then in the blended, it would be 20 all the variance, 22. Right. And up to two extra in the middle of the year if we absolutely had to. So if there were 29. Without any loss of grant. Yeah. Right, because you could appeal to the state for two slots. We've spoken to SED, and we can't start on a variance, but we can get a variance once the year starts. And the grant money will cover the age? Grant money is going to cover the four eights. And if we have to hire another teacher? So the cost of the district well, is a hiring of another teacher. We had to hire another kindergarten teacher <coughs> anyway, because anyway. we said we would if it got to 30. 30. Right. Yeah. And apparently we're at 31 now? We're at 
I, I said we are 29 plus one is 30, and then we're yeah. some conversation about a about special job. needs child. Right. Okay. So, so we're at 30. Once we're at uh, the maximum, does the lottery count after for the people that apply after that? Or no. does everybody? It'll, it'll be lottery? closed after that. Once we, once we start school. So if someone moves into the school district with a pre-K student and wants them in that class, there will be an opportunity for them. They can be on what's called a waiting list. And so if, it, if a child moves right. um, or is out of district, then we could certainly. There's no program that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is not perfect. It's good. Yes, but it's not perfect. Commodore, to answer your question about that, if we s s cap it at 13 pre-K students, right. we put out notice tomorrow that we're going to have a pre-K blended classroom setting or multi-age setting, and we are going to allow 13 families to come in. If 16 people show up between now and we're, we got to put mm -hmm. an end date right we have to pick out 13 names out of, like a lottery it is a lottery then the other yeah. three yeah. then the other three families are on a wait list if we get to that point after that date only 10 families showed up we're going to accept them all and then any family that comes thereafter is the next person to go into the program until it's full until it's full so if we get 10 pre-k We'll put the 10 in there with the seven kindergartners and right. have room for three pre-K students during the year. And Correct. you lose some state aid if you only have 10. Well, unless we get them as the year progresses. Yes. Yes. Well, I was just going to ask, I was going to ask what the cutoff date is for the it's state aid. Let's say Christmas best. time, <coughs> we get the extra three. Do we get more state aid? Uh, it is Ben's day. Um, Good question. <laughs> which is slightly before Christmas time. October, right. It's October, yeah. Middle of October. My only, my only concern at that point is, out of the budget, where do we get to take care of the eights if we don't get enough state aid to take care of the four eights? Let's say we get ten. We don't know what that state aid is going to be to take care of the four eights, correct? No, that would, that would come out of the general fund budget. Yeah. It would end up being, let's see, ten thirteenths. Uh, I think we're going to have the opposite problem. I think, it's I think we're going to have the opposite problem mm -hmm. too. But you figure you get eighty percent of the grant, you get ten out of thirteen, so you'll lose about thirteen thousand dollars on that. Mm -hmm. But if you can run a pre-K program for thirteen, that was something that would be. Would be we need a minimum of twelve, right? Right. We need a minimum of twelve to get the full grant. Oh yes, it's not out of thirteen. It's out of twelve. Twelve. Um, the minimum is twelve for a full day program. And the state requires two aids for preschool 20, 20 so students we would be we would be putting two in kindergarten the state does not require <coughs> that but we would do that so that the blending would be more efficient and more able to blend and that other class is going to have no not a lot but a higher number of students than what we're used to i definitely think it's a good thing and i'm definitely for it i just hope it's not too late because we're two weeks away i know yeah that's my I, only I'm concern well aware. i wish i had my more only time concern to plan is that you know you did all this hard work and oh, i'm sorry I, I enrolled my kid in homestead or mm -hmm. i enrolled my kid down in we'll know port that. or, or we'll whatever know that. we'll know that by our september we'll board meeting until tomorrow yeah. because we have to have the board right first i can right. tell you that a lot of families financially are, are going to switch over anyway. mm -hmm. right they're going to say oh well you know going to the home in a school might be a twelve if they get their money back instead of right well they even lose, they lose deposit. their deposit it's yeah. still cheaper to come back to us i'm just throwing, i'm just yeah. just throwing uh, everything out there so you know we the state yeah you know, i'm sorry we we anticipated it all okay yeah. and, and that's yeah. our worry i mean that not not that we I don't think we think we're going to not have enough. I, I think we're we worried that the numbers are higher than. That's right. Mm -hmm. I agree. And then we don't know what to do. And a lottery makes people upset, I think. And so Gosh. I'm a little worried about a lottery. Well, perfect well, scenario is we have 13. Well, <laughs> so the lottery is not our idea. It's required. It's right. the ability of half day and half day. And get the 12. But that's a whole other thing. Is that the same grant? So anyway, what's, what do you think? Anybody else? I like it. I yeah. think it's a, a great idea. And so, in other words, those seven kindergarten students, they're on the roster with the pre-K students in name only. Name only. Yeah, I can't. Yes. Okay. okay. It'll be kindergarten. Yes. Right. On the roster. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then the aides kind of give a little bit more opportunity for some individualized. Right for grouping. That's okay. a beautiful thing. Yep. So then I you like can it. pick up, and these are we. These would only be the seven youngest of the kindergartners by age. 
are on that roster. And as June explained, oh, they're, where they go, it's up to by the teachers. Grade. They'll be grouped by task yeah. and ability for that task. Okay. And there's a lot of good, healthy learning play that goes on that kindergartners and preschoolers won't need much differentiation from. So there's there's times when you'll be able to do special things with certain kids, but the others will be in their learning play situation. I like so. it for the social aspect of it particularly. <coughs> mm -hmm. There is a benefit to that. Good. Joanna? I am all for it. I think it's wonderful. Thank you. Amador? The number of 20 per yeah. class, is that uh, our ideal? That's a state. That's if for the you preschool. Put, if you minimum. put one preschool student in a class, it's only Any 20 other. students all together. So. Oh, I thought it's only the pre-K. Yeah. No, 20 total in that class, period. Okay. It doesn't uh, matter on the roster. It doesn't matter whether you have a class of 20 pre-K or one pre-K right. student in a K class. It's limited to 20 once you add a pre-K student. That's why the other K class can grow. Right. With any incoming kindergartners that come in. And hopefully, so not that we don't want students, but hopefully right. that. <laughs> we like 20 because then we're able to, to grow. We like 20 because the state requires us to have 20 in the one. And we would we had to split the kindergarten anyway. I think we're going to end up with 22 or 23 Great. in that kindergarten right. class. At this point. Scott has to find another kindergarten teacher before opening day. Hurry. Mm -hmm. And four aides. Three aides. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do it. We'll find this would be a callback situation. Uh, there's one teacher we have to ask back who I don't believe is interested, but uh, we'll have to ask uh, Brittany Palanis uh, again. Right. And you have to ask again and again for uh, seven years. Depending on their certification also. We don't right. need a pre-K certified you have teacher. pre-K certified. Right, because June is pre-KK. So we have that. But if we, we got we, another pre-K certified we, teacher, then we're going to require a dual certification pre-K anyway. yeah. in the end. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to say yes. it would be preferred or required? Yeah, because we can then utilize that person yeah, for either. at going yeah, forward, to too. There's going to be so many applicants. We're going to be choosing. Elementary, early ed, we'll have a 1,000 applicants. <laughs> I mean, no, <laughs> sorry, Scott, sorry. Pre-K and K are required Not with pre-K, that should lower it. We'll have a few less, but it'll only be 800. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Well, we posted um, a position last thir Thursday. You posted the position Thursday? Yes. When's your Thursday? And I have 26 resumes sitting mm -hmm. on my desk today. And what's, uh, uh, what's the position? Is um, special ed at the high school. And that's not that, I mean, that's not as common by any means, although mm -hmm. special ed. But people that are not employed at this point in the year are jumping. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're, and I haven't had a chance to look through them yet, but I suspect we'll have a lot of them are, that are duly certified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. And that's that's uh, wonderful. For that's us. just icing on the cake for us. Very good for us. Yeah, it's very good. That's wonderful, duly certified. So are are we set with the pre-K? Because I got two okay. other things I'd like to address. <laughs> All right. All right. So with us tonight we have uh, Sarah Simon Schult. She is on the agenda to be our new music teacher at the elementary oh, wow. school. So we'd like to welcome her. And um, I appreciate Carol stopped by the elementary school today. It was fun. And um, we had last week a visit from uh, Northeast Paving Company that uh, resealed and uh, seal coated our driveway, relined the driveway, and also out back in the, um, the horseshoe area of the back, we put a 40 by 50 uh, foot paved area for the students. So in the winter time or even in the summertime, there will be no playing out front of the building. They can play in the back and have a paved area in which to do so. So, and that money came via um, uh, our Aileen Gunther. Aileen Gunther. So I, I appreciate that. And hopefully we'll have her visit the elementary school and see what type of things that grant money she provided to us has that we've used it for. But that was cheap, right? I mean, that was, what, how much was it? 10, yeah. It was less than 10. And it's done already from the That's last board meeting to this board meeting. So you're yeah. welcome to come yeah. by. It's uh, They did a good job. Yeah. And we yeah. hope it stays, but the, the seal coating was needed also. Yes, we can add to it in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I expect okay. it to yes. be more like 30,000. I, I, well, I would expect it to be double, to be honest with you, because I deal with blacktop in my job. 
Mm -hmm. I really would have told you to go. Two and a half inches of asphalt. You got a really good deal there. Which means our tractor can clear the snow off in the winter. Yes. You got a really good deal there. Because it didn't make sense to have the kids playing in the street after putting the rocks on the sidewalk. Some people can't run the road. Some people can't play in the street. Now we put them out in the road. So this will take care of that. All right. So anything else, Scott? No, nope, that's it for the okay. elementary school. Let's go back. Do you have anything else for us? No, we are getting ready to open the buildings. I think uh, the elementary is in very good shape. And high school is, needs a little bit more work, but we'll be ready. Gene will take care of that. And we have a new already hired. Have you heard from the chemistry teacher <coughs> and the um... chemistry teacher has been in a number of times, and Excellent. we're getting a three-day-a-week psychologist from BOCES. And we have asked for a uh, person that was here last year, Barbara uh, Schrauser, Schrauser, Dr. Schrauser. And she'll be with us in the high school for three days a week. Mm -hmm. So that's not a change in budget. That was already in the budget. Well, we were going to hire our own. This is much uh, more cost efficient. Okay. Good. Good. So we are, uh, except for the new positions that we chose to create two weeks before school starts. We are fully staffed. We're not still looking for anything except new stuff. Special ed. to replace uh, Colleen Koenig, who just left. Uh, right, that's what I mean, the new stuff. But so Colleen, um, on the, the good side of that, Colleen will be with us yes. until so September 25th. Oh. Because, so. we, well, we hold it for the 20, 30 days. I see. Okay. And so she'll be with us till then. And she's thrilled about that good. as much as we are. Um, because of the kids she services right. and it's going to, they're going to be um, devastated that she's leaving she's had them for uh, such a long time but she's going to be there to set it up and we may in going through resumes we may find the same thing that we find somebody and oh, they can right choose you know every school district has the choice you don't have to hold them but at this time of the year yeah, definitely have to. So that's great um, that we have her. So she'll be here for almost a month, and okay. um, and that will be very good for our kids. Excellent. And we have we've posted, but only internally posted the position that the board was kind enough to say yes to uh, for the high school junior high school lunch periods because. We need, we're going to need a monitor. Um, we haven't had anybody yet. Scott's going to post it for me on OLAS tomorrow and see what we get. Um, I was hopeful that we might get some more because Scott has bus drivers that, uh, that, yeah. co that come in and do it and it works well for them in between their morning and p.m. runs. Um, but not so much this time. So. This time, yeah. So we'll just see who you know who becomes available. Sure. Okay. It's it's one of those, um, you know, one of those bumps in the road mm -hmm. when you change the number of bodies you have available. Sure. Gene, anything else from the high school? No, the high school um, is in, I believe, very good shape. It, there anything is, came out great. The, the, I sorry? want to thank Ron for the job he did painting. The paint is gorgeous, and um, I had no idea that Michelangelo was repainting the building mm -hmm. um, when I came back. Job. So he, yeah, and very nice colors. May change color on the one wall downstairs because it looks funny. Yeah, it's got. A, when you put it, it on the block, looks funny on the brick and it looks great on the sheetrock. Sheetrock yeah. looks good on the so. on the block. It looks. He's got some other things to do. Terrible. But, uh, yeah. We'll see if he has time for that. And. Um, Grounds wise, yes. we are, um, as I was explaining to John, we kind of have to do a second cutting. Um, oh, it's always raining. For the lawn, because they've cut it, they were able to get it cut once last week, um, but it's got to be cut again. Uh, they can only get through so much. And especially around in the back of this, the seventh and eighth grade wing, where we have that rock wall. Mm -hmm. Next they weed whacked a lot of it, but it's got to be, the rest of it's got to be weed whacked, weed and they've assured me that'll happen and that the, sh the shrubs need trimming. So we'll get that done. So we're going to be fine outside, 
and inside is just we have to jump around as we do the cleaning. You get a chance to look at the new gym floor. It's gorgeous. It looks like it's a just mirror. Gorgeous. They did it with oil-based polyurethane. It looks great. Mm. And we're going to this year um, seal the terrazzo um, because uh, the that's terrazzo the, needs to be sealed. That's the main hallway, right? Yes. And um, it, it is much better, holds up much better. Um, so they are stripping that. It had some finish on it. And then our, um, as John pointed out to me this morning, what, that I can't tell the difference between fake terrazzo and real terrazzo. That we have. The new wing. The the new wing has fake terrazzo. Mm -hmm. uh, vinyl. And I'd never and seen it before. Jackhammer up a section of it. Resement because we got a expansion it, joint. It's peeling. It's every seal. But Troy can do that. Well, it's probably water. I, you know, I'm sure. But and I talked to uh, Melissa, and bus schedules are uh, really getting finalized. We because we talked a lot today about the transfers we have to make with the little ones yeah. in the mornings yeah. to get them to, you know, to all day BOCES. Mm -hmm. So she's really on top of that. Yeah. Um, and uh, the first day of school comes whether we're ready or not. That's right, so, so you gotta be ready. <laughs> so we'll be just fine. No, we'll I, be have just to, fine. I have to thank both of you and Dr. Morgano and Lisa and Caleb and everybody who's here all summer for the work and the custodial staff and the, it's just the incredible. Custodial staff did a great job. Yeah. What they get done and how good Fantastic. everything looks. And you're right, whether whether we're ready or not, it opens, we'll we open ready. school, but we're always such a clean and shiny school that, you know, I have no doubt that's what it's gonna be again yeah. this year. So I really thank everybody who put their time in this summer because I know that's not the best part of the year for, or maybe it is in a different way. And if we get done by the 29th, uh, I'm yeah. going to give everybody off on the 30th. First. No, if you get done by the 30th. No, 29th. 29th. 30, oh, 30, oh 30, 30, Wednesday, Wednesday because he's got it right. Yeah. They can have the 31st. Summer. What's going to happen with the garden that Mary Ellen's got? Yeah, since Mary Ellen's not here anymore. Well, Mary Ellen will maintain it if we want to stipend her. Is there a stipend now? Was there a stipend now for the garden? So. No. I have no idea. Well, it was it was through let's a, a Sullivan Renaissance grant, I believe. Uh, okay. And so okay, that, let's let's look for a volunteer and that then that that only covered the cost. Yes. Yeah, right. so, I don't know what else. It would be a shame to let it go. It would, it would be because it's in the front of our school. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just got rid of that high school. I right. looked in the other portable today, and as I asked you, Jay is taking a lot of his stuff out of there. Right. There was stuff in there that was saving for no good reason. Uh, old banners and. Air conditioners and chairs that are broken. <laughs> just a box. Uh, that in the garbage. Mm -hmm. Went in down, throw it out. And we can tear that building down and put up a, a, ha a shed half that size on concrete. These buildings were put on dirt, mm -hmm. so they're rotten. Yeah. And, uh, and it doesn't also, smell too good in there. Also an eyesore. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's better. Well, I, I asked that's what I asked you what we were going to That'll be the next one to come down, mm -hmm. maybe uh, next summer. Yeah. Well, when you go to rent a machine, talk to me first. Oh, we'll do. Right. And what about putting out to the senior citizens to see if one of them would like to tend the garden or mm -hmm. have it as a senior citizen? It's a very good idea. Because they, I know that <coughs> quite put, put a few it, of no, them. Notice on the fitness center. Yeah. yeah. Or put it and put uh, it up in the mail uh, the senior yeah. center office. Yeah. Uh, All right, we'll do. Building. I give agree. It, it has to be maintained. If whoever makes up the flyer, give it to me. I'll give it to. We'll give it to Doreen. Or Fred Bosch. Fred Bosch goes to the senior citizen building all the time. Okay. He's in charge of this building, so. So we could maybe make up a flyer, Lisa. Because we could even do it in Lumberland, too. And the board asked last night about a brochure. We're in the mm -hmm. process. Bob had done a, a draft of one, and we're, we're taking a look at that and updating it. And I'll present it to you for your review uh, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have at this time public comment. Limited to the consent agenda, which is 301 through 704, and of course, all the news that you've just heard. So, um, <laughs> public comment. <laughs> Kelly. Hi. 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 Kelly Robertson, Public Comment Center. Um, I have a question. Um, with adding 
um, the possibility of the new pre-K students. We discussed last meeting about the bus run, how we would eliminate that. Am I guessing that we now have to put it back on? Potentially, we're still discussing that. I think the bus run that she eliminated was not necessarily just because yeah, we lost preschool. I think she looked at mapping and stuff. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. We'll, know, we'll have to discuss it tomorrow. And if they, because if right. they need seats. Yes, exactly. So we yeah, have to I couldn't get out ahead of the board. I can't ask transportation yeah. what they would do if the board hasn't approved it yet. Okay. So we'll be talking to Melissa tomorrow. It was a high school bus run that was, I think um, we should approve it. Collapsed. So it wasn't mm -hmm. an elementary run. So I don't know that it would have effect, but it very well could, and I, and I can't tell you that. Mostly what she looked at, and, and if you notice buses, uh, high school run buses, even in in the morning, because we have so many kids that drive. Um, and, um, and then the regular 210 run out of here in the afternoon has very few kids on it because 80 some percent of our kids stay here to play athletics so she was able to do some moving around and, and we're really with adding nursery or preschool um, she's already counted in everybody except 13 kids they are already we'll in the run all the K's are there so because we don't know who those kids are yet so she's not going to be able to tell us. No, she doesn't exactly. know which routes they're on. She knows yeah. who the kids are. Right, right. And, we'll, and we don't know who the kids are. Well, we'll find out. Okay, that's uh, that's understandable. Um, and I just, I have mixed feelings about this conversation. Um, coming from pre-K for three years. Awesome. Thanks for bringing it back. Teaching first grade. Um, I disagree with the conversation of the seven youngest kids because we sent those kids I think really looking at their personalities and the dynamics in the classroom I think it would be my professional opinion is looking at it that way as opposed to the youngest mm -hmm. um, my opinion. Thanks. Oh, I'd like to speak to that because we talked about that extensively and absolutely academically not even academically even um, developmentally, even developmentally, if we looked at it that way, my concern is that then we would be deciding the parents would have more difficulty with the reasoning. Not my child or this, you know. So, so we we looked at it from that perspective, and we said, I don't know how we can justifiably pick from last year's children who's developmentally not as ready when we sent them to kindergarten at the end of last year. So we couldn't find a way to talk to the public that made any sense fairly to them except to go with the seven youngest. So I, I, see, I hear what you're saying. And we, the pre-K teachers did a Brigant screening on them. Yes. Which shows how they are progressing. Okay. So that information is available and we nice. you know did assessments on their something. physical development their academic development their social development so so you had a range from that brigands we did and we that. can use that information certainly with those seven children but i think we have to go by um birth date i don't know how else to be objective and fair to the public on who to choose mm -hmm. and thank you for understanding that this is very, very difficult for me. Yes. I hear you. And it's very hard to be unsettled in the spring, settled again, and unsettled. And that's very hard. And it's very hard to, because you rev up for the beginning of the year. You rally in August. I taught for 25 years. You rev up and you get going. And to change it now, I mean, I give June a lot of credit for going okay to this. But I hear what you're saying, Kelly. I do. OK, um, I need a motion on the consent agenda. Is there any other public comment? Going once, going once. OK. I'll make that motion. 
Thank you. I need I'll a second. second. All right. Discussion from the board on that motion? Okay, I need a vote. Miss Stacy, please. Yes. Yes. Joanna? Yes. yes. Scott? Yep. Amador? Yes. Okay, and I say yes. We are all the way to new business, no old business. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So is there any old business hanging out in your heads that we haven't thought of recently that we should? We've, we've certainly accomplished a lot this summer that was old business in a variety of ways. So anything from the board for old business? All right, then under new business, I would like a motion to have the board support for this preschool program. I'm not sure how you want to phrase it. Uh, to reinstate preschool and uh, a blended class multi with seven multi-age multi class uh, for the uh, 18 19 school. I'll make that motion with John just said. I second it. So I can't, we don't need to. I can't restate that. Numbers in it. Just. I wouldn't put numbers. No. It's no, we don't yeah. Know exactly how many preschool. We'll try to stay in. within the numbers that we talked we about. Have <laughs> yeah. that's and when right. we say preschool, that's we're limited anyway by the state. So it's already a given. There's not like we had. There are still a few moving parts. So. Yeah. 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 All right. Discussion board. I didn't hear. How did the idea come to you? You woke up one night and been there. Four thirty. Four thirty. No, you were, you texted me at four thirty in the morning, so it must have been. I've been up for for half an hour. It's already driving down eighty-four. Do we need a motion to hire the four? New positions, the four aides. I make that motion. We're creating four new positions. Include that in the. Uh, Should be and the include that in the. Can you include all Should of that in one motion? I would, that with the motion? I would yes. definitely include that with including, all of the Including uh, the four new, uh, four additional eight teacher aid positions. And the additional and kindergarten. Or pre K, if they're duly certified. Yes. Which they likely would be. Pre K K. Yeah. Certified teacher and four. Do we have one aide already hired? So are yes. saying three? Three different. So three aides, all under this same motion. Right. Mm -hmm. Got that, Lisa? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. This is And the reason, the reason that I wanted this to be all around the table with presenting it was because although it is John's uh, midnight traumas that take over and he thinks of these things. It is Scott who has to do all the work. Yeah, well, yeah and I, besides June at the classroom level, it is Scott who has to run this, manage this, look this over, make sure it's legal, make sure it's right, make sure it's we don't lose any job. kids. Yeah, and so you're so gonna, as my, uh, it's on your shoulders. Yes, and John's already looked over the uh, ad that's going out, so he's corrected my Excellent. spelling errors already. Excellent. You have to start with that. <laughs> yeah, yes, too. Yeah, it looks great. The. Um, the aide that was hired yes. is a certified teacher, so it may be four aides. Maybe. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so just just my guess would be she'll apply for the position. That would be just like if she was an outsider. So she applies and then we have a new opening. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so at that point, yeah. not right. at this point. Right. Okay. Right. She's not. Yeah. She's in the position. All right, so I have a motion and a second. We have discussion. Any other discussion? Well, wouldn't you, oh, the, yeah, since that just came about, if she applied for the teacher's job, wouldn't you just go ahead and take four more for the aid? You wouldn't have to reapply for well, another. We well, if she would have to know. resign her position, I think. I don't know how if that she works. Was hired. She'll, be, she'll be interviewed and be considered a finalist because she works for us, but we're going to pick the best person we can for that position. For right now, may be hard, may not be hard. <coughs> so we don't know that yet. Okay, I'm just I'm just thinking ahead a little bit. If, you know, to save the to advertising again, if we could just keep going with the list of people. Doesn't cost us anything to put it on all of us. No. And the top three or the top four aides, we would know. So if a new aide position opened up, we would know the list that we mm -hmm. could go back to and invite. We wouldn't have to open it up again if we had a good list of willing candidates. But it doesn't cost us any advertising. Right. No, I get that, but we're under a time stream here. I mean, we're two weeks ago. That's all I'm getting at. You understand that. That's all I'm getting at. You know, yeah, I'm well aware of that. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. I've been doing this a long time. I know the two weeks before school starts. Plenty of routine. Yeah. This is always it could be worse. Yeah. It could be two days. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll now tomorrow we'll be calling the parents of the pre -K Tomorrow we'll kids? start with, the, yes. yeah, that'll be the first line and just let them know that we're 
putting back in the program. And we'll program. put on our web page and the parents on of the Messenger kids that we're going to have signed up to see if they're still interested. That's okay. the biggest thing. And we're going to put on our website and on Messenger to the parents that uh, this class is in existence. And enrollment is open and too. See who's interested in now. Right. And then do we have an obligation to the kindergarten? To those any of the kindergarten children's parents they're they're coming for an orientation on the second okay. uh, or excuse me next tuesday not the second whatever and day that is and we can kind of go over anything that we need to do at and that time know who those seven we'll have a better be understanding where we are at that time okay okay so are we making it a dual pre-k K certification now that's what june has that's what we like yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not going to limit us. Trust me, finding that would be a thousand. Anybody who has that <laughs> would, would be. and six yeah, or six. And nine yeah. certification will have the. That's me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have it too. You know, it means they're old, the newer, June. It means they're very old. <laughs> no, the younger people have first grade through six. Yeah, so yeah. First through. You know, now so. Okay. If they have kindergarten, I'm sure they have pre K. Okay. Okay. These days, right? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I have K through six. I don't know. You don't, you don't have the end? I didn't have to have pre-K. But now the new, under the new certification, they have to have the end through six. So it, it depends, and we want to change it because every this is coming out of the budget. We're not interested in somebody with 20 years experience who might have end certification because we can't pay that high. We're looking at the bottom. You can't say that. <laughs> I know I'm old. I didn't know we couldn't say that. <laughs> okay, take it off the never mind. I better shut up. Okay, sorry. I garble my words anyway. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone is Jeez. open to applaud. <laughs> Everybody is yes. welcome. Everybody. Okay. Yes, that's and the best person may be of any age. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Not okay, we better vote on this. Can we vote on this? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's vote on it and get adjourned there. Before we get any more trouble. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Kuhn. Yes. And Ms. Dutch. Yes. And Mr. Halleck. Yes. Mr. LaFoot. Yes. And I vote yes. Um, any other public comment? You're not going to talk about it tonight. Yes, so. Um, Zen. Sorry. Um, what is the salary for an aide? Uh, they typically get between 11 and $12 an hour, their hourly employees. Minimum wage. Right about minimum wage. Okay. 11 10 So what does that come to? Uh, between 18 and $20,000 per aid. So, and the, the aid that we're getting from the state is 60000 61200 So we already have one aid. We're going to add three, and the, and the grant will cover those three. Okay. And do the AIDS get um, health benefits? No, no. No. And the number of the 18 to 20 I gave you includes the Social Security and Medicare. Okay, so that's fully loaded. That's. Yeah. Because they're 10 month. And. Um, yeah, they're 10 month. I know you said that the um, you don't expect the, the enrollment to be less than 13, but if it is, what would be the amount that would be lost? Would be it's a percent, it's that Our percentage child. minus so it's one thirteenth of sixty one thousand two thirteenth, depending on what number it goes down. It's one eleven and a half. Uh, one yes, eleven and a half. Right. half. Oh. Be, yeah. You can't have any half kids. Half. We don't let them. Yeah, they, well, technically, yeah, we could get a half of a kid. So difficult. They, they'd be okay with that. Eleven and a half is a full grant. Yeah. Okay. So that's so the percentage. Because it was based on a half day program. That's why it comes out to eleven. Yeah, it was based on twenty three oh, kids for a half day program. Okay. So they allow you to do half of that for a full day. So the number is based on that. So if you have 10 kids, you get 10 and 11 and a half of your If you were to have 10, I know. I had some other questions about things from last week, um, if that's all right. Um, Caleb and I have been talking, and uh, he said teachers that one of the teachers that uh, uh, the resignation was accepted last time will be eligible for retirement uh, for uh, retirement health benefit. benefits. Um, what is the what is the the hurdle that you have to cross to um, ten years in the district. Ten years in the district. In the district, yeah. So you could come in at twenty five and work for ten years and, and leave and still be eligible for retirement? Benefits? Well you have to be fifty five. Yes. Or 
older, depending older. on what tier they're in. So it's 10 years and 55? Well, no. it depends on the tier. And it's tier. Does somebody could be 62. Come here as a 53 year old, work for a few years and retire. And if they work for the 10. But, yeah. but they wouldn't get health benefits because they didn't from us. There's a contractual it's benefit, contract. and then there's the state retirement. The state yeah. retirement doesn't cause it. Well, we pay a certain amount yeah, of money. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the retirement. I'm talking about the health benefits. Like, so, yeah, they so have to be here a number of years. They would be eligible for medical benefits when they retire. Hmm. Depending, regardless of when they leave here. They have to be here a number of years, okay? Ten years. True. Right. If yeah, they, ten years. They're ten years, but they don't retire and they leave. They don't get our health benefits. They have to be here at least ten years and then retire from here. Right. Uh, Caleb, do you agree with that? Uh, yes. Yeah. See, because they Okay. So what? What age do you have to be retired? Do we well, that's that's what depends on the uh, tier. Seven. I think we're up to tier six or something like that. So. Are well, we tier six? You need to have thirty years of service in. And um, Josh, are we up to tier six? Uh, for tier six, we don't have to make this. If you go through tier four, which would be fifty-five and thirty years, or sixty-two and any number of years, no penalty. But she uh, was questioning health benefits. So 10 years. Yeah, I'm not Plus talking 62. about retirement. I'm talking 10 about years. Oh, it's 10 years. 10 years period, no, yep. no age. Correct. For teachers. Okay, so I just want to be clear. Somebody can work here for 10 years as a teacher, leave the district. Retire. Only retire. And get the health insurance. They can't what, just. At what age do you. And the age that you retire is, is tier dependent? Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's basically. It, yes. It's more dependent on years of service at different tiers. Well, not to get off the topic, but with uh, Josh can maybe help us out on that. Well, I, what she's, well, I guess what she's trying to ask is, could a teacher come work here for 10 years, leave, go to another district, retire from that district, and get medical benefits on us? No. 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 All they could get would be the, the buy -in. Yes. Would be the no, 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 no. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even get They, they wouldn't even be they, eligible they, for they the buyout? have to retire from In the other district? One, I, I misspoke on that. I, one of the teachers that resigned was not. It was one teacher that retired from our district. Let's get again. But that was one of the ones you were asking about. Okay. So that was what the she had So been Susan, if I was 35 and came years. here and worked here for 10 years and 45 and left, uh, that's not retirement age, so I would not be able to get the health benefits. If I worked here for 10 years to age 55, that's retirement age. So then I would be able to get the so health benefits. So it's not tier dependent. Well, if that I'm saying if that was the tier that I was in, yeah. Because at the, uh, some of the higher tiers require you to be 62, right, mm -hmm. Josh? Yes. That's yes. right. So that's what we don't know. And we don't know what tier you're in because it's been dependent on your age when you came into teaching. So not, each, each individual is, is a is separate case. Yeah. Could be different tiers. Yeah. yeah. So depending on their age, June is a different tier than Josh probably. Kelly's a different tier. But they tier. have to be here 10 years and retire to get medical benefits. Right. Here's something to help with it. Um, the original intent of medical benefits and retirement was um, going back to tier one or whatever. 55 is a very common retirement age. But you wouldn't get Medicare until you were older. So part of it was to help bridge the gap. So you retire at 55, but then, oh, I've got to pay for my health benefits. So that was the advent of that benefit anyway. Of course, it's evolved and it has nothing to do with today, but but that's that was the reason that it was done. So that's why it's different. It's when you retire, you get the health benefits. So say, say me, I started work in the public retirement system at 31. So I won't be able to eligible to retire until I'm at least 61. Mm -hmm. So I'll have 30 years of service then. So I couldn't retire at 55, but I could at a Triple giant point. production benefits possibly. But um, then I wouldn't be eligible for medical benefits because I'm not eligible to retire. I would be leaving. I would <laughs> Since he started working. <laughs> Very good. OK. We are up to number 10. I need a motion, please. Look at I'm making them all look. It's the adjournment. <laughs> you don't have to look. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All right. And all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Uh, big meeting. It is. Well, yeah. Yeah. I did not have a chance to let you know. It's for Santa Fe. It's been like this. Oh. The youngest will be. Well, is it possible he had a whole state? He had a talk to all of you.
is gorgeous and um, I had no idea that Michelangelo was repainting the building mm -hmm. uh, when I came back job. so he, yeah and very nice colors they change color on the one wall downstairs because it looks funny really yeah it's got a, when you put it, it on a block looks funny on the brick and it looks great on the sheetrock sheetrock uh, looks good on so the on the block it looks he's got some other things to do terrible but, uh, yeah we'll see if he has time for that and um, Grounds wise, yes. we are, um, as I was explaining to John, we kind of have to do a second cutting. Um, well, it's always raining. For the lawn, because they've cut it, they were able to get it cut once last week, um, but it's got to be cut again. Uh, they can only get through so much. And especially around in the back of this, the seventh and eighth grade wing, where we have that rock wall. Mm -hmm. Next they weed whacked a lot of it, but it's got to be, the rest of it's got to be weed whacked, and they've assured me that'll happen and that the, sh the shrubs need trimming. So we'll get that done. So we're going to be fine outside, and inside is just, we have to jump around as we do the cleaning. You get a chance to look at the new gym floor. It's gorgeous. It looks like it's a just, mirror gorgeous. They did it with oil-based polyurethane. Looks great. Mm. And we're going to this year um, seal the terrazzo um, because uh, the terrazzo needs to be sealed. That's the main hallway, right? Yes. And um, it, it is much better, holds up much better. Um, so they are stripping that. It had some finish on it. And then our, um, as John pointed out to me this morning, what, that I can't tell the difference between fake terrazzo and real terrazzo. That we have. The new wing. The the new wing has fake terrazzo. Mm -hmm. uh, vinyl. And I'd never and seen it before. Jackhammer up a section of it, re cement it, because we got a re expansion it, joint. It's peeling. And, it's, and re seal. But Troy can do it. It's up from underneath for some reason. Well, it's probably water, I, you know, I'm sure. but. And I talked to uh, Melissa, and bus schedules are uh, really getting finalized. We, because we talked a lot today about the transfers we have to make with the little ones yeah. in the mornings yeah. to get them to, you know, to all day boses. Mm -hmm. So she's really on top of that. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, the first day of school comes whether we're ready or not. That's right, so, so you got to be ready. <laughs> so we'll be just fine. Well, we'll I, have just to, fine. I have to thank both of you and Dr. Morgano and Lisa and Caleb and everybody who's here all summer for the work and the custodial staff and the, it's just the incredible. Custodial staff did a great job. Yeah. What they get done and how good Fantastic. everything looks. And you're right, whether whether we're ready or not, it opens, we'll we open ready. school, but we're always such a clean and shiny school that you know, I have no doubt that's what it's going to be again yeah. this year. So I really thank everybody who put their time in this summer because I know that's not the best part of the year for, or maybe it is in a different way. And if we get done by the 29th, uh, I'm yeah. going to give everybody off on the 30th. First. No, if you get done by the 30th. No, 29th. 29th. Oh, oh, Wednesday, Wednesday because he's got it right. They can have the 31st. So. What's going to happen with the garden that Mary Ellen's got? Yes, it's Mary Ellen's not here anymore. Well, Mary Ellen will maintain it if we want to stipend it. Is there a stipend now? Was there so. a stipend now for the garden? So. No. I have no uh, idea. Well, it, was, so it was through a, a Sullivan Renaissance grant, I believe. Uh, okay. And so, okay, that, let's let's look for a volunteer and that then... That wasn't... That, that only covered the cost. Yes. Yeah, right, so. so. I don't know what else. It would be a shame to let it go. It, it would be because it's in the front of our school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I just rid of that high school. I right. looked in the other portable today, and as I asked you, Jenny is taking a lot of his stuff out of there. Right. There was stuff in there that was saving for no good reason. Uh, old banners and 
air conditioners and chairs that are broken. <laughs> just a box uh, they're all in the garbage. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, throw it out. And we can tear that building down and put up a, a, ha a shed half that size on concrete. These buildings were put on dirt, mm -hmm. so they're rotten. And, uh, and it doesn't also, smell too good in there. Also an eyesore. Mm -hmm. it, it's better well, shape. I, I yeah, that's right, actually what we that, would That'll be the next one to come down, mm -hmm. maybe uh, next summer. Yeah. Well, when you go to rent a machine, talk to me first. Oh, uh, we'll do. All right. And what about putting out to the senior citizens to see if one of them would like to tend the garden or mm -hmm. have it as a senior citizen? It's a, a very good idea. Because <coughs> they, I know that we quite a few of them. Notice something in the fitness center. Yeah. yeah. Or put it and put it up in the mail. Senior Center office. Yeah. Uh, All right, we'll do. Building. I agree, it, it has to be maintained. Whoever makes up the flyer, give it to me. I'll give it to. We'll give it to Doreen. Or Fred Bosch. Fred Bosch goes to the Senior Citizen Building all the time. Okay. He's in charge of this building, so. So we could maybe make up a flyer, Lisa. Because we could even do it a lumber like there. And the board uh, asked last time about a brochure. We're in the mm -hmm. process. Bob had done a, a draft of one, and we're we're taking a look at that and updating it. And I'll present it to you for your review uh, as soon as possible. Okay. So we have at this time public comment limited to the consent agenda, which is 301 through 704, and of course all the news that you've just heard. So um, public comment. <laughs> Kelly. Hi. 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 Kelly Robertson. Hi. Um, I have a question. Um, with adding um, the possibility of the new pre-K students. We discussed last meeting about the bus run, how we would eliminate that. Am I guessing that we now have to put it back on? Potentially, we're still discussing that. I think the bus run that she eliminated was not necessarily just because yeah, I don't know we lost preschool. I think she looked at mapping and stuff. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. We'll, know, we'll have to discuss it tomorrow. If they, if right. they need seats. Yes, exactly. So we yeah, have. To I couldn't get out ahead of the board. I can't ask transportation yeah. what they would do if the board hasn't approved it yet. Okay. So we'll be talking to Melissa tomorrow. It was a high school bus run that was. I think um, we should approve it. Collapsed, so it wasn't mm -hmm. an elementary run. So I don't know that it would have effect, but it very well could, and I, I can't tell you. Yet. Mostly, what she looked at, and, and, and if you notice buses. Uh, High school run buses even in in the morning because we have so many kids that drive um, and um, and then the regular 210 run out of here in the afternoon has very few kids on it because 80 some percent of our kids stay here to play athletics so she was able to do some moving around and, and we're really with adding nursery or preschool um, she's already counted in everybody except 13 kids they are already we'll in the run tomorrow. all the k's are there so because we don't know who those kids are yet so she's not going to be able to tell us no she doesn't exactly. know which routes they're on she knows yeah. who the kids are right right and well and we don't know who the kids are well we'll find out okay that's uh, that's understandable um and I just, I have mixed feelings about this conversation. Um, coming from pre-K for three years. Awesome. Thanks for bringing it back. Teaching first grade. Um, I disagree with the conversation of the seven youngest kids. Because we sent those kids, I think really looking at their personalities and the dynamics in the classroom, I think it would be my professional opinion is looking at it that way as opposed to the youngest. Mm -hmm. um, my opinion, thanks. Oh, I'd like to speak to that because we talked about that extensively and absolutely academically, not even academically, even um, hmm? developmentally. Even well. developmentally, if we looked at it that way, my concern is that then we would be deciding the parents would have more difficulty with the reasoning not my child or this you know so so we we looked at it from that perspective and we said I don't know how we can justifiably pick from last year's children 
who's developmentally not as ready when we sent them to kindergarten at the end of last year. So we couldn't find a way to talk to the public that made any sense fairly to them except to go with the seven youngest. So I, I, see, I hear what you're saying. And we, the pre-K teachers did a Brigant screening on them. Yes. Which shows how they are progressing. Okay. So that information is available and we, nice. you know, did assessments on their something. physical development, their academic development, their social development. So So you had we, a range from that Brigant. We did. And we that. can use that information certainly with those seven children, but I think we have to go by um, birth date. I don't know how else to be objective and fair to the public on who to choose. Mm -hmm. And thank you for understanding that this is very, hard. very difficult for me. Yes. I hear you. And it's very hard to be unsettled in the spring, settled again, and unsettled. And that's very hard. And it's very hard to, because you rev up for the beginning of the year. You rally in August. I taught for 25 years. You rev up and you get going and to change it now, I mean, I give June a lot of credit for going okay to this, but I hear what you're saying, Kelly. I do. Okay, um, I need a motion on the consent agenda. Is there any other public comment? Going once, going once. Okay. I'll make that motion. Thank you. I need a second. second. All right. Discussion from the board on that motion? Okay, I need a vote. Miss Stacy, please. Yes. Yes. Joanna? Yes. yes. Scott? Yep. Amador? Yes. Okay, and I say yes. We are all the way to new business, no old business. Yeah, I'm going to do that new business because it is new business. So, is there any old business hanging out in your heads that we haven't thought of? recently that we should we've, we've certainly accomplished a lot this summer that was old business in a variety of ways so anything from the board for old business all right then under new business i would like a motion to have the board support for this preschool program i'm not sure how you want to phrase it uh to reinstate preschool and a uh, blended class with seven multi-age multi-age class uh, for the uh, 18 19 school I'll make that motion with you I just said I second it so I can't, we don't need to I can't restate that numbers in it just I wouldn't put numbers no. it's no, we yeah know exactly how many preschool we'll try to stay in. within the numbers that we talked we about have this <laughs> point, yeah and right. when we say preschool that's we're limited anyway by the state this so it's already a that. given there's not like we had that's choices. There are still a few moving parts. So. Yeah. 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 All right. Discussion board. I didn't hear. How did the idea come to you? <laughs> you woke up one night and been there. <laughs> 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 uh, no, you, were, you texted me at 4.30 uh, in the morning. So it must have been 4. I've been up for, for half an hour. It's already dry. The, uh, do we need a motion to hire the four? New positions of four aides. I make that motion. We're creating four new positions. Include that in the. Uh, be and the kindergarten include teacher. That in the, can you include all Should of that the in the one motion? I would, that with the motion? I would yes. definitely include that with Including all of the Including uh, four new, uh, four additional eight teacher aid positions. And the additional and kindergarten. Or pre K, if they're duly certified. Yes. Which they likely would be. Pre K K certified teacher and four do we have one aid already hired so are yes. saying three three there so three aides all under this same motion right. Right. got that least <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> okay. and the reason the reason that i wanted this to be all around the table with presenting it was because although it is john's uh midnight traumas that take over and he thinks of these things it is Scott who has to do all the work. Yeah, yeah and I, Besides June at the classroom level, it is Scott who has to run this, manage this, look this over, make sure it's legal, make sure it's right, make sure it's we don't do lose any job. kids. Yeah. And so you're so gonna, my, uh, it's on your shoulders. Yes. And John's already looked over the uh, ad that's going out, so he's corrected my Excellent. spelling errors already. Excellent. You have to start <laughs> with that. Yeah, yes, Jim. Yeah, it looks great. The, um, 
the aide that was hired yes. is a certified teacher, so it may be four aides. Maybe. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so just just my guess would be she'll apply for the position. That would be just like if she was an outsider. So she applies and then we have a new opening. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so at that point, yeah. not right. at this point. Right. Okay. Right. She's in the position. All right, so I have a motion and a second. We have discussion. Any other discussion? Well, wouldn't you, oh, the, yeah, since that just came about, if she applied for the teacher's job, wouldn't you just go ahead and take four more for the aid? You would have to reapply for well, another. Well, if she would have to know. resign her position, I think. I don't know how if that she works. Was hired. She'll, be, she'll be interviewed and be considered a finalist because she works for us, but we're going to pick the best person we can for that position. For right now, may be her, or may not be her. <coughs> so we don't know that yet. Okay, I'm just I'm just thinking ahead a little bit. If, you know, to save the to advertising again, if we could just keep going with the list of people. Doesn't cost us anything to put it on all of us. No. And the top three or the top four aides, we would know. So if a new aide position opened up, we would know the list that we mm -hmm. could go back to and invite. We wouldn't have to open it up again if we had a good list of willing candidates. But it doesn't candidates. cost us any advertising. Mm -hmm. right. No, I get that, but we're under a time stream here. I mean, we're two weeks ago. <laughs> that's all I'm getting at. We understand that. That's all I'm getting at. You know, yeah, we just, that's well aware of Yeah, I'm not aware of that. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this a long time. I know that two weeks before school starts. Plenty of routine. Yes. This is always it could be worse. Yeah. It could be two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll now tomorrow that. we'll be calling the parents of the pre Tomorrow kids? we'll start with the, yes. yeah, that'll be the first line and just let them know that we're putting back in the and we'll program. put on our web page and the parents on of the messenger kids that we're going to pre signed up to see if they're still interested that's okay. the biggest thing and we're going to put on a website and on messenger to the parents that uh, this class is in existence and enrollment is open and too. see who's interested in now right and then do we have an obligation to the kindergarten to those any of the kindergarten children's parents they're they're coming for an orientation on the second okay. uh, or excuse me next tuesday not the second whatever and day that is and we can kind of go over anything that we need to do at and that time know who those we'll have a better be understanding where we are at that time okay okay so are we making it a dual pre-k -K certification now that's what you that's what the we answer. like yeah Okay, it's not going to limit us. Trust me. Finding that would be a thousand. I think that anybody who has that would, would be. N6 yeah, or N9 six. certification yeah. will have the. That's me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have it too. You know, it means they're old, newer, June. It means they're very <laughs> old. No, no. The younger people have first grade through six. Yeah, so yeah. First through. You know, now, so okay. If they have kindergarten, I'm sure they have pre K. Okay. Okay. These days, right. Well, I don't know. I have K through six. I don't know. You don't, you don't have the end? Well, I didn't have to have three K. But now the new under the new certification okay. they have to have the mm -hmm. N through six. So it, it depends. And we want to change it because every this is coming out of the budget. We're not interested in somebody with twenty years experience who might have N certification because we're not we can't pay that high. Right. We're looking at the bottom. You can't say that. I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not old. I didn't know we couldn't say that. <laughs> okay, take it off the never mind. I better shut up. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I garble my words anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone is Jeez. open to apply. <laughs> Everybody is welcome. Everybody. Yes. Welcomed. Everybody. Okay. Yes. And the best person may be of any age. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Do not discriminate. That's not the right. Maybe we better vote on this. Can we vote yeah. on this? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's vote on it and get adjourned there. Are we getting right. more trouble? Okay. Yeah. Ms. Kuhn? Yes. And Ms. Dutch? Yes. And Mr. Halleck? Yes. Mr. LaPutte? Yes. And I vote yes. Um, any other public comment? You're not much off here tonight. Yes, so. Um, Zen, sorry. Um, what is the salary for an aide? Uh, they typically get between 11 and $12 an hour. They're hourly employees. Minimum wage. Right about minimum wage. Okay. 11 10. So what does that come to? Uh, between 18 and $20,000 per aide. So, and the, the aid that we're getting from the state is 60000 61200 So we already have one aid. We're going to add three, and the, and the grant will cover those three. Okay. And do the aides get um, health benefits? No. 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 And the number of the 18 to 20 I gave you includes the Social Security and Medicare. Okay, so that's fully loaded. That's, yeah. Because they're 10 months. And, um... Yeah, they're 10 months. 
I know you said that the um, you don't expect the, the enrollment to be less than 13, but if it is, what would be the amount that would be lost? It's a percent. It's that Our percentage charge. minus. So it's one thirteenth of sixty one thousand two thirteen, depending on what number it goes down. It's one eleven and a half. Uh, one yes, eleven, 11 right. and a half. It's oh. gotta be, yeah. You can't have any half kids. We don't let. Yeah, it's eight. Well, technically, yeah, we could get a half of a kid. <laughs> so difficult. They, they would be okay with that. Eleven and a half is a full grant. Okay. So that's so the 12. percentage. Because it was based on a half day program. That's why it comes out to eleven. Yeah, it was based on twenty three oh, kids for a half day program. So they allow you to do half of that for a full day. So the number is based on that. So if you have 10 kids, you get 10 and 11 and a half of your If you were to add 10, I know. I had some other questions about things from last week, um, if that's all right. Um, Caleb and I have been talking, and uh, he said teachers that one of the teachers that uh, the resignation was accepted last time will be eligible for retirement uh, for uh, retirement health benefit. benefits um, what is the what is the the hurdle that you have to cross to um, 10 years in the district 10 years in the district in the district yeah. so you could come in at 25 and work for 10 years and and leave and still be eligible for retirement benefits? well you have to be 55 yes or okay. Older, depending or on what tier they're in. So it's 10 years and 55. Well, it no. depends on the tier. And it's tier. Does somebody could be 62 come here as a 53 year old, work for a few years, and retire. And if they work for the 10, but, yeah. but they wouldn't get health benefits because they didn't from us. There's a contractual it's benefit, contract. and then there's the state retirement. The state retirement doesn't cause it. Well, we pay a certain amount. Yeah, I'm not talking about the retirement. I'm talking about the health like, go So yeah, they so have to be here a number of years. years. be eligible for medical benefits when they leave. Hmm. Depending, regardless of when they leave. They have to be here a number of years, okay. Ten years. True. Right. If yeah, they, ten. They're ten years, but they don't retire and they leave. They don't get our health benefits. They have to be here at least ten years and then retire from here. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Caleb, do you agree with that? Uh, yes. See, I, I might have. Okay, so what what age do you have to be retired? Uh, that's that's what depends on the tier. Yeah. And the yeah. tier, we're, I think we're up to tier six or something like that. Are well, we? tier six, you need to have thirty years of service in. And um, Josh, are we up to tier six? Uh, for tier six, no, we don't have to make those. We go through tier four, which would be fifty-five and thirty years, or sixty-two and eight hundred years with no penalty. But she uh, was questioning health benefits. So 10 years. Yeah, I'm not Plus talking about retirement. I'm talking 10 about years. Oh, it's 10 years. 10 years, period, no, yeah. no age. Correct. For teachers. Okay, so I just want to be clear. Somebody can work here for 10 years as a teacher, leave the district. Retire. Only retire. And get the health insurance. They can't at what, just. At what age do you. And the age that you retire is, is tier dependent? Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's basically. It, yes. It's more dependent on years of service at different tiers. Well, not to get off the topic, but with uh, Josh can maybe help us out on that. Well, I, what she's, well, I guess what she's trying to ask is, could a teacher come work here for 10 years, leave, go to another district, retire from that district, and get medical benefits on us? No. 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 All they could get would be the, the buy-in. Yes. Would be the buy -in. No, 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 no. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even get they, benefit. They wouldn't even be they, eligible they, they for the buy-in? They have to In the other teacher. district? One, I, I just spoke on that. I, one of the teachers that resigned was not. It was one teacher that retired from our district and let's get again. But that was one of the ones you were asking about. Okay. So that was what the she had So Susan, if I was 35 and came years. here and worked here for 10 years and 45 and left, uh, that's not retirement age, so I would not be able to get the health benefits. If I worked here for 10 years to age 55, that's retirement age. So then I would be able to get the so health benefits. So it's not tier dependent. Well, if that I'm saying if that was the tier that I was in, yeah. Because at the, uh, some of the higher tiers require you to be 62, right, mm -hmm. Josh? Yes. That's yes. right. So that's what we don't know, and we don't know what tier you're in because it's been dependent on your age when you came into teaching. So not, each, each individual is is a is separate it, case. Could be different tiers. 
Yeah. So depending on their age, June is a different tier than Josh probably. Kelly's a different tier. But they tier. have to be here 10 years and yeah. retire to get medical benefits. Right. Here's something to help with it. Um, the original intent of medical benefits and retirement was um, going back to tier one or whatever. 55 is a very common retirement age. But you wouldn't get Medicare until you were older. So part of it was to help bridge the gap. So you retire at 55, but then oh, I've got to pay for my health benefits. So that was the advent of that benefit anyway. Of course, it's evolved and it has nothing to do with today, but but that's that was the reason that it was done. So that's why it's different. It's when you retire, you get the health benefits. So say, say me, I started work in the public retirement system at 31. So I won't be able to be eligible to retire until I'm at least 61. Mm -hmm. So I'll have 30 years of service then. So I couldn't retire at 55, but I could at a Could giant production benefits possibly. But um, then I wouldn't be eligible for that. Because I'm not eligible to retire. retire. I would be leaving. I would <laughs> Since he started working. <laughs> Very good. OK. We are up to number 10. I need a motion, please. Look at I'm making them all look. It's the adjournment. <laughs> you don't have to look. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All right. And all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Big meeting. It is. Well, yeah. 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 I, I did not have a chance to let you know. It's for Santa Fe. It's been like this. Right. Oh. The youngest well, is it possible he had a whole state? He had to talk to all of you. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to work two hours. 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 I